My name is Matt, and I have layout envy. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the video series that I've decided to call Rail Ramblin'. It's just cheesy enough for model railroading. All right, so today I wanted to talk about big layouts. Um, this is something that I've kind of been thinking about lately. I've kind of been thinking about. I went on a, a business trip recently, and uh, I took with me some uh, great model railroader magazines, uh, some uh, model railroad planning magazines from over the years, just to get some inspiration for uh, the work that I'm doing for myself. And I, I started to feel that old feeling that I would feel from years ago, um, and that is a, a, a twinge of jealousy. You know, I, I'm looking through these pages of this magazine, and I'm just like, oh man, like some of these are gorgeous and huge and beautiful, and oh, like, oh man, I want that, you know? It's like, uh, here's one right here. This one is uh, uh, 28 by 28 feet, bigger room than I have, but like, look at what he's fit in here. Um, some beautiful cities, some roundhouses, giant mountain scene in the middle. Oh, why not me? I want this. <laughs> and, you know, in years past, I didn't have the space. Um, I had very small model railroads up into the one that I'm building right here. Um, and so, like, I'd see these layouts and I'd see, like, the possibilities um, that a giant room and lots of space uh, would provide. And I'm like, oh, you know... I get jealous. I gotta say, I get I get really really jealous of this kind of stuff. And I'm here to I'm here to say like uh, uh, that's probably not very healthy for us as motor railroaders. Um, giant layouts come with a lot of of issues that we don't maybe necessarily consider um, uh, uh, as we're building our smaller layouts. So what 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 are those considerations? Well, big layouts are expensive even even a layout of my size which i have a 20 by 14 foot room now it's like 20 by 10 and then a little 14 foot uh you know um section right here that uh that i'm in but it's 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 what it's what i would consider a very big layout but i think what most people consider kind of a medium sized layout and oh my gosh it's expensive holy cow like i've been slowly buying um, stuff for this layout over the years, knowing that one day I would have the space and I would be building a layout of this size. This is a tip, by the way, because um, modern railroading is so expensive. Like, yeah, buy a little bit at a time. You, you got a couple extra bucks, and you're like, eh, you know, uh, maybe buy some turnouts. Who knows? Because, like, here's the thing: turnouts are like what, twenty bucks a piece. I'm, I'm, I've got microengineering turnouts, so they're about twenty bucks a piece. I have a few curved turnouts on my layout as well, which are like, you know, $40, $50 a piece. Those are very expensive. Um, but even in a small day like this, I, those, that's 27 turnouts. At 27 turnouts at 20 bucks a piece, at least. You do the math on that. It gets very, very expensive. And that's just the turnouts. That's not counting flex track. I think flex track is like, what, 4 or $5 for a three-foot section now? I mean, this adds up. And, and, and I, you know, I, I knew that was, that was going to be the case. But one thing I didn't really consider was just the cost of, of the lumber for building the bench work as well. Oh my gosh, this stuff right here, one by threes, six foot sections. I use six foot sections because I have a Ford Focus and six feet is, only, is as large as I can fit in that thing. Um, I, I'm, and I, it, granted, I'm using nicer wood, but you know, at uh, $4 for a piece for one of those, um, you're actually you're buying a ton of wood, and I didn't realize how much wood I would actually be buying. It adds up very very fast. And then plywood, I'm using a cookie cutter method for building the sub road bed, which we'll get into in a video later on. But um, I'm buying a lot of plywood there too. That's very expensive. Um, it's just it, it, these little things like wood. I mean, it's not a little thing, but it adds up, right? I mean, it costs a lot to fill space with bench work. It's cost a lot to fill a space with track and turnouts. Um, scenery is going to cost a lot as well. I mean, you know, scenery is probably the cheapest thing you add to your layout, but it's going to cost quite a bit. I think some of the giant railroads we see in these kind of magazines are from kind of an old view of model railroading that I'd like to see kind of change. And I think it's changing a little bit here and there. 
But, you know, model railroading 20 years ago, you know, it used to be, I don't, I'm not going to say cheap, but much more affordable, especially for younger railroaders. A lot of people wonder, like, why aren't there young people in the hobby? There are, trust me. Just go on YouTube, you find them all the time. But one reason that might be difficult for young people to get into the hobby is just the cost of things. It used to be you could buy a locomotive, a very nice locomotive, very well-running locomotive, kind of like the top-of-the-line locomotive, for, like, what, under 100 bucks. Um, when, when I was younger, under 100 bucks, that made sense. Nowadays, it's like $300. That's very, very expensive, right? You can't fill out a roster of locomotives very, very quickly or easily, especially if you don't have a lot of money. That's not the worst of it, though. I think rolling stock is, is, is incredibly expensive now. Holy cow. I was buying rolling stock for, what, five bucks a piece, I think. Right around, right around $5 a piece, you could get a, a decent kit, um, an Aethern blue box kit. And, you know, even under $10, you can buy some of the nicer, ready-to-run kits out there. When I was younger, I'm still fairly young, but when I was younger, you know. Um, I'm spending 50 bucks a piece on cars now. What? You know, when I find them on sale, like I'll find some some cheap cars for 30 bucks. It's expensive, guys. It's really expensive. Um, I'm not buying it all at once. Again, I'm buying a little bit over the years as I, as I kind of, you know, eh. I, I got I you know I get this I get the I get it in me I want to buy a, a piece of rolling stock I buy a piece of rolling stock even though my railroad was not ready for it yet you know it's there in a box waiting for me when I when it when I am ready that's how I mitigate a little bit of the cost um, it's just expensive it's just expensive another thing to consider with large model railroads is um, they take obviously longer to build I'm I'm taking several months three four months to do the bench work in this uh, model on this model railroad and that's just to get it ready uh, to lay down my cork and my track um, so it's taking a little bit of time if if this room was bigger let me let you in on a little secret by the way this room could have been a lot bigger if you've been watching my video series you will know like the very when I first started it, the very first thing I did was I built a big wall down the center of the room to cut the room essentially in half um, and so the uh, uh, the uh, the back half of that is my wife's hobby room. Although she's not really doing much um, uh, uh, hobby related stuff in there right now, it's kind of for the last year and a half, it's kind of been storage, which is fine, which is fine. But she offered me that room. She said, you know, I'd like a hobby room, but I don't really do a lot of hobby stuff anymore. Well, you can have it if you want for your model railroad. I almost took it. I almost took it. I could have made this layout as twice the size. Uh, and um, I thought about it long and hard. But I didn't, you know, the, 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 the cost of things obviously is a big, big deal. I think for me, an even bigger deal was just going to be the maintenance um, and the amount of work it would have taken to get the layout to a point of just running trains. Um, and that's something to consider with large layouts. They take a lot of time and effort, not only to build, but to maintain as well. Cleaning track. Um, you have to run trains regularly. You have to clean track regularly. Otherwise, your layout, your model railroad does not run well, and it's not fun to run. And when it's not fun to run, you don't want to run it. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to be in the room, you know, working on it. So you, it, it languishes. It becomes... You know, it, it becomes harder to to uh, to maintain at that point, and it's just it's just a vicious cycle. You know, it's like a it's like a snowball rolling downhill essentially at that point. Um, I didn't want to deal with that. I, I wanted a room. I wanted a layout that I could come down here and with minimal effort clean the track, get the trains running, um, and, and enjoy an afternoon of model railroading. Um, and for me, a twenty by fourteen foot room, perfect size for that. Um, but there's still that little twinge of like, man, like some, I could build a layout the size of some of these in here. Uh, why wouldn't I do that? You know, what sort of kept me in check, uh, was I, I thought to myself, what is it that I want to accomplish in my model railroad really? And what is it that I can 
what is it that is not worth the extra time, effort, and money in order to create? So if I was to have the room twice the size of the room I have now, what would I have done with it? Well, I would add probably um, a, a longer uh, uh, interchange yard. Okay, sure. Maybe more tracks. Uh, I would have had a second town um, so that I could kind of spread my industries out a little bit more. Sure. I would have had a lot more mainline run. I like watching mainline running on trains. Um, great. Uh, is it worth twice the price of bench work? Uh, twice the price of, uh, of uh, flex track and, and all the extra turnouts I would need? Pardon me. Um, all the extra time and energy it would take to create that additional scenery. Is it worth? Is it really worth it for those additional things I would like to have? Uh, at the end of the day, no, I, I don't think so. I can do basically everything I want with the layout that I have in this room here. Um, operationally, it's great. Um, at least I think it's great. We'll find out when I actually get to operating. Um, uh, from a scenic perspective, I've got some nice uh, uh, scenery elements planned out. I'm able to, to um, fit everything in and do all the stuff that I think is going to make me happy. Um, and I think in the end, it's going to make me happier than if I had all that additional space. Um, <clears throat> I think the... The, uh, uh, the downsides of the large layouts out, outweigh the upside of what I could have possibly done with it. Does that make sense? I think it does. Hmm. I think that's all I wanted to say for this video. Um, I am starting to ramble now, so <laughs> great title for, for a video series like this. Uh, um, anyways. Uh, so, uh, if you guys have uh, any thoughts or comments about large layouts, what do you think of them? Um, and uh, are you happy with the size of the model railroad do you have, that you have now? Did you bite off more than you can chew and accidentally build yourself a layout that was too big for you? Um, you know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next Rail Rambling. That's the goofiest name for a video series I've ever heard. Coming home, <sighs>